Bay Area residents are absolutely fed up. They tired, boss. They tired, boss. They fed up with these street takeovers. Take a look. Loud, annoying, and disruptive, a large group of dirt bikes and ATVs rumbled through San Francisco and Oakland yesterday. The riders causing traffic issues and sparking lots of concerns from neighbors. Today, those neighbors say they are fed up with the disrespect and the chaos. And they're asking city leaders on both sides of the bay to do something. Here's NBC Bay Area's Sergio Quintana. At Valencia and 23rd Streets in San Francisco, video shows dirt bikers popping wheelies on the center bike lane and doing donuts in the inner. And it's always as usual suspects. I want y'all to know that. Stop saying it's a stereotype if you always the ones that's doing it. Section. And it went on and on and on and there was no stop to it. For more than 90 minutes, San Francisco resident Sharky Laguana shot video of the group of about 100 motorbikers take over the intersection. Just before their arrival in the mission, they had done similar stunts in the Castro neighborhood. Traffic there ground to a crawl. One of the cars that seemed to be associated with the motorbike group parked in the street, blocking the F-Line streetcar for a few minutes. In video shot in the mission, police did eventually show up with lights and sirens. The bikers rode off, some even doing spin-outs right in front of the officers along the way. Laguana says he's used to the occasional group of dirt bikers riding through the city, but this was next level. They have to be held accountable. If they're not held accountable, it's just going to keep happening, and it's just going to get worse. Do you think it's gotten worse? Oh, 100%. Videos posted on social media seem to have touched a nerve with residents who say they're tired of the noisy bikes that occasionally take over parts of the city. Supervisor Raphael Mandelman says City Hall is well aware of the concerns raised by residents, but says police chasing them may cause more harm than good. In 2021, when the CHP responded to a pack of motorbikers on the Bay Bridge, most escaped by riding against traffic. A passenger on one of the bikes was thrown off and killed when the cyclist tried hopping a median barrier to get away. Before the Sunday mass of riders arrived in San Francisco, it's not clear if some of the same group was in Oakland. Police arrived in several police cars in response to reports of a robbery at a local gas station where the group was congregating. One person was taken into custody. In San Francisco, pictures and videos of the motorbikers and cars that seemed to be associated showed they didn't have license plates. According to the San Francisco Police Department, they have made no arrests, but they are investigating to try to figure out who all was involved. When you let things go unchecked, it gets exponentially worse because nobody fears you. Fear is a very useful tool in making examples out of people. Listen, if something happened to you while you do, while you committing a crime, you deserve it. And so y'all got to take the, the, the handcuffs off the police and let them do their job. Let them do their job or these people are going to come through and they're going to ruin your neighborhoods and they don't care anything about you. But that's all right. You know what? Keep handcuffing the police. Y'all deserve everything that you get as a result of what's going on. Uh, in addition to that, uh, a deli, long-term delis, large long-term delis and all of these businesses are thinking about continuing to close citing safety concerns and homelessness. Check it out. The owner of the landmark Los Angeles Deli Langer says he might be closing it all down because of crime in the area. Norm Langer says he's not getting anywhere with City Hall to do something about the issues stemming from nearby MacArthur Park. KTLA's Lena Bovian live in LA's Westlake District. Uh, actually inside uh, Langer's. Good morning, Alina. Good morning, Jess. That's right. We are inside and we can see that this place is still vibrant, still popular with its customers. So it's not a matter of not having enough business. It's simply an issue of safety. And this really is a symptom of a broader picture. Now, I do want to show you something. The reason for uh, this talk today about the closure is because of an article that was written in the LA Times. And that over there is Mr. Norm Langer. He also spoke to the Times several times before talking about his family business right next door. You can see See all the uh, accolades that this restaurant has received over the years. So this place really is a big deal and people love it for the food and the nostalgia, the ambiance. But now this place may be closing after 77 years of business. But That's insane to have a place that has been open for 77 years in business closed due to safety concerns and homelessness. 
You can see inside here this morning, it is still very busy. This is a beloved establishment. The owner, 79-year-old Norm Langer, grew up working in this restaurant alongside his family. Traditional deli food, famous for their pastrami sandwich. And right across the street is MacArthur Park, also a very famous spot. Norm Langer telling the LA Times in a recent article, the neighborhood has just changed so much over the years that it's tough to stay open. The crime, the gang activity, Activity, the homeless population. Langer also telling this Times uh, it's been an uphill battle to get city officials to clean up the streets, to restore public safety, and make MacArthur Park a destination again rather than a place to avoid. He's been asking for things like improved lighting, increased police patrols, social services outreach, and targeted cleanup efforts here. Now, also take a look at this. This is from Andrew Wolf also telling the Times about the situation here. He says you'll see bodies on top of each other completely passed out with the stench of fentanyl everywhere and as you look up to the alley there's a fog from everyone smoking and people are walking around like zombies it is a disgrace that it all exists now and that's real and that is a hundred percent of truth they not capping they not putting on they not trying to exaggerate the situation that is a hundred percent the truth it is it is basically become like a movie out west the wild, wild west is the wild, wild west again. It is lawless, carelessness, and it is crazy to think that that happens inside of the United States of America. Well, we got a president, we got Congress members, we got governors, city council people, judges. You telling me that these people can't work together to eventually clean up our streets to make it safer and, and tourism is a big thing and People no longer want to go out there. We just did a report yesterday about the hotel that's next to the airport in Oakland that just recently closed after, what, 60 years or 50 years in business or something like that? <sighs> Somebody said didn't know that fentanyl had a smell. Listen, homelessness has a smell. There is a certain stench. I smell it every day when I go into certain areas in order to pay my tasks to the streets and make sure that certain people are taken care of. There's a certain stench that comes along with a certain way that you live your life. Homelessness has a certain stench. Death has a certain stench. If you've ever, ever, ever smelled it before, if you've ever smelled death, it has a stench to it. It is a certain smell that is associated with it, depending on where you at and how you operate. Drug use, certain alleys, when people piss everywhere, it has a certain stench. If y'all ever been in a project hallway and you're going up and down and you know that people piss in the hallways and stuff like that, it has a certain stench. It is a certain smell that comes along with this stuff. And I, I often attribute it to when I associate it with spirits. Spirits. I, so I associate it with having a certain spirit on you, a certain level of addiction on you. But anyways, that's what's happening over there uh, out west. And then in San Jose, right, we've been staying out west for a little bit. Chicago, we're going to come back and visit y'all. New York, I'm coming through. Don't worry about it. In San Jose, uh, a woman and a child was killed by a, a wrong way driver. On a South Bay highway tonight, two people are dead after a truck going the wrong way collides with another vehicle. Was there any level of intoxication at this point that's undetermined? Tonight, we have just learned that the victims are a 14 year old boy and a 47 year old woman. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Meebeck. And I'm Betty Yu. California Highway Patrol says the driver of a truck was traveling southbound on the northbound lanes and hit a Tesla head on. Take a look at this new dash cam video posted tonight on Reddit. It shows the wrong way driver barreling down Highway 85, speeding past other drivers before the deadly crash. The collision happened just after 3.30 p.m. on Highway 85, south of Highway 87 by Santa Teresa Boulevard. The, la the on Highway 85, those lanes on Highway 85 are back open tonight. KTVU South Bay reporter LaMonica Peters joins us live from San Jose with the very latest on the investigation. Betty, as you just mentioned, Highway 85 it has reopened. It reopened just around 8 o'clock tonight. And we did just learn that the victims in this crash were a 47-year-old woman and a 14-year-old boy. The other driver involved was 39-year-old Duncan Waquery of Orlando, and he was taken to a nearby hospital. They always survive. They always survive, no matter how fast they're going, 
no matter what their their soberness level is, the the perpetuator of the crime, the the person that's driving a five thousand pound missile the wrong way down the street, barreling down the freeway, they always survive, and they get the most innocent of people. They never get the killer. Ah oh, man, the killer just so happened to be driving down the street and hit the wrong way driver that was drunk driving. Both of them passed out and they, they no longer with us. That never happens. There's always a woman and a child, a family, a four-year-old that burns away in a fiery crash or some crap. It's They always just get taken away. Oh, and they got taken away with minor injuries and minor scratches to the hospital. Look at that. This is what's left of a Tesla car after being hit head on by a man driving this white Toyota Tacoma pickup truck Monday afternoon. Some of the uh, initial calls that came in were reporting a, a white pickup truck that was traveling uh, in the wrong direction, was traveling southbound in the northbound lanes. Uh, we had uh, officers who were getting in position to, to stop that vehicle uh, and then uh, we had the crash. California Highway Patrol says a woman driving with a passenger were in the Tesla and both died at the scene. The driver of the pickup truck was taken to a nearby hospital with major injuries. CHP officer Ross Lee says thankfully no one else was hurt, but witnessing the incident can have a lasting effect. Every day, y'all, sometimes it's not even your fault. Sometimes you're not even the person that's committing a crime or doing something. You just going down the street, heading to basketball practice with your mama, and next thing you know, you see a Toyota Tacoma just coming to end your life. Be careful. Be careful. Live every single day like it's your last. Leave it all on the flow. Don't leave nothing to chance. Don't think that tomorrow is promised to anybody. Make sure that you tell the people that you know, and it's not to say that this is going to happen, but in a general sense, make sure you tell the people that you know that you love them. Show love to the people that surround you. Stop having so many grudges and feeling some type of way about people. Honestly, that, that, is, that is my true lasting thought from this. Stop having grudges against people. Stop thinking that everybody is doing you wrong. Have a level of forgiveness. That don't mean be stupid and have people out here taking advantage of you, but forgive people and, and, and enjoy everything. Enjoy every single day. Do the thing that's right, but at the same time, enjoy every single day because you just never know. You're going to be gone. They're going to be going to the hospital and they're going to be out tomorrow talking about, man, I don't know what happened. I need to be forgiven for my crimes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your quick hits.